Hello, my name is Samuel Sermons, and I am a CCIM graduate of 2012, and I'm currently a producer and personality at Magic 107.5-97.5 in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is what happens after CCIM. My name is Samuel Sermons. Once I figured out that TCOM was where I wanted to be, I threw myself into it. You know, really trying to make a difference out here and also try to hone my craft here at Ball State. And I thought I was, you know, possibly going the TV route and, you know, doing audio for that. But then someone said, you should really try this radio station. I'm just like, we'll see what happens. WCRD was, you know, the very, very first station that I ever worked on. That's always going to be where my foundation of radio lies. And at my first show, February 25th, of 2010. Now, it's a special day I'll never forget because it was also my mom's birthday. So I got to call mom saying, hey mom, happy birthday, love you so much, but we gotta get ready to switch majors because I found out what I'm doing the rest of my life and I think I'm kind of good at it. I finished Ball State and I took an intern credit. Instead of just graduating, I took an intern credit and went to Atlanta to work for V103 Atlanta, the largest urban station in the country. I would come in so early that I would also, I guess, be kind of Ryan Cameron's intern, getting to see how an Emmy Award winning broadcaster, not just an on-air personality, a broadcaster moves and interviews and, you know, how he preps his show every day. Um, it was something that I took notice of and I worked hard to make sure I stayed on everybody's radar. Then when Ryan went to mornings, that worked out and I moved myself up to a producer of the morning show was pulled to 1380 WLK again because I did I started a morning show there as well so I got two morning shows under my belt within three years which is you know really unheard of but at the end of the day like my story is not at all linear but I feel like every move I've made or have been forced into has made sense you got to really know your audience you got to go out and hang out with them like you got to be able to you know go to certain areas and you know, just sit there and be a fly on the wall. My station markets to black women 45 to 54. I have never been a black woman and I'm not yet 45 to 54. So I will walk over to the account executives and I'm like, hey, this is what we have on topic for today. And I just press record. If I get them talking, I know the rest of the city is gonna be talking because that's what I'm talking to or what I'm delivering the content for. If it's kind of like, eh, I'm like, all right, next. And that's the thing about a lot of radio stations right now, and the reason why I like podcasts are winning because a lot of people that are listening to the radio are just like, I'm hearing the same stuff over and over again. I go everywhere that I know our listeners are. I go to the concerts. I see what excites them. I know, like, I got to be in tune with them because if the moment I'm not, the moment they start knowing more than me, I'm, why do they need me? More so just trying to figure out, like, time management and also, like, topic management. What's going to work? What's not going to work? If this doesn't work, do you have a backup? Like, it's more so always being prepared, but also, like, you have to be really, really selective on where you're going and how you're going to get there. Radio is a popularity contest at the end of the day. I understand, at least in where I work now, is that it's all about connections, but it's more so now moving back to Atlanta, people are remembering my face because they saw it so much the first time around. I was at every event, I was everywhere, and I always made sure to speak to everybody. I'm not the type of person that's gonna sit back and wait for an opportunity to hit me. But the reality of it is, like, if you don't have that grit and that grind to really go out and make sure you get stuff done and make sure you stay number one and make sure that no one else is out working you, that's what it is. It challenged me more to, you know, dig deeper, to get better content. You know, when Atlanta, like, the landscape changes so much, those meters move, and you know, something you may be doing good right now may not resonate next week. Or you talk about it was a slow day, but then that was your highest rated show that week. And it's like, wow, I've seen on both sides of it when either you hot or you not. And my job is stay hot. With the company I'm at now, Urban One um, Atlanta, Radio One Atlanta. Um, this is the largest black owned media corporation in the world. We have, you know, those hard hitting moments and where we need to be real serious about a topic that affects, you know, our demographic, our community. For the market, I was just recognized as with the Standing Ovation Award and being recognized as someone in the cluster that goes above and beyond for this quarter. And I didn't expect that because it was a year 
to the day prior that I just got, I signed the contract. It blows my mind a little bit, but I know that my hard work was actually seen and viewed and I'm just happy it happened. You know, I'm, I don't take any wins or losses for granted because you, you got to learn those losses so you can appreciate the wins more. Thank you.